we're starting lesson four here for the solving quadratics unit, and that is using the quadratic formula. Okay, so we're going to start, we'll get to the quadratic formula part in a minute, but we're going to start by graphing x squared minus 3x plus 4. So let's look at this. We're going to type in the function x squared minus 3x plus 4. Now when I look at this graph, I am going to make a table of it really quick so we can plot our point. It looks like, let's see. I'm going to go up to, let's add a point here. It looks like I should maybe add a value at 3. Yep, and maybe 4. Four might be a little bit. 40. Yeah, okay, so we can plot. Looks like what's going to fit on our 10 by 10 grid from negative 1 to 4. So go ahead and pause the video really quick so you can copy the table down, or you can have it on your own Desmos, and then plot it onto the paper. So when I look at this parabola, it does look like the parabola that's on Desmos here. And the question is, based on the nature of the root, is the quadratic factorable? Well, remember, root is the same thing as x-intercept. And when I look at this graph, it never crosses the x-axis, which means it has no x-intercept. Well, if I have no x-intercept, that means that my quadratic is not factorable. So we have a problem here. We couldn't find the solutions by factoring. We couldn't find the solutions by graphing. So that's why we have this new method called the quadratic formula. Okay, so let's do some vocab words here, and then we'll jump into it. So since there are many methods for solving quadratic equations, including factoring and graphing, that's what we have been doing so far in this course. These two methods work when you get exact real nice solutions. However, sometimes graphing by factoring, or, or I'm sorry, solving by factoring or solving by graphing doesn't work. So we're going to use the quadratic formula to find the solutions. The solution, same word here, is the same as the root, the zeros, or the x-intercept. All four of those words mean the same thing. Now here is our quadratic formula. x equals the opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We will work with this a lot today, so I'm not going to talk a lot about it now. The hard, it's not even hard, you just have to be able to identify what a, b, and c are going to be. So let's jump in and practice doing that here. So use the quadratic formula to solve that equation from the original. So this is the problem that we graphed up here. Now the first thing, when you look at the quadratic formula, is you see a, b's, and c's. So we need to identify what a, b, and c are. Now a, b, and c are the numbers in our quadratic. So here, since I have a plain x squared, that means a is the number in front of it, which is 1. b is the second number you see, negative 3. And c is the constant of 4. So I have a, b, and c here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully put that a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. Now the negative b, I say is the opposite of b, because you're going to take the opposite of the negative 3 here. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Now notice, the positive 3 is over the fraction mark, so make sure it's in the numerator of a fraction. We have the symbol plus or minus, which we'll talk about later, and then a big square root. Under the square root, we want to be careful. Our b here is negative 3. Because I have a negative, I want you to make sure anytime you put something in for b under the radical, positive or negative, you put it in parentheses. That way, you know that you are going to get the right answer. So you have negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 4. All right. Now that's your numerator. That all goes over 2 times a. Now, here's how I want you to solve this. I do not want you to type that all into your calculator. I do not want you to type that all into decimals. I want you to look at just the radicand. Not the radical, the radicand. What is underneath the radical there? That is what I want you to type into your calculator or decimal. Okay, so what we're going to type into the calculator is parentheses, negative 3, close your parentheses and square it, minus 4, 
We'll just use the parentheses for times A times C, which is 4. All right, now I have a negative 7. Now let's put that back into the quadratic formula. So what I'll have, I'll simplify this, is 3 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 all over 2. 2 times 1 is 2. All right, we're getting closer, but we need to simplify the square root here. We don't like to leave square roots unsimplified, especially when there's a negative. So off to the side here, let's review what we were just working on in the last lesson of simplifying square roots. If I have a negative under the radical, I have to pull out a square root of negative 1. And radical 7 doesn't break down. It just stays the square root of 7. So this simplifies to be I radical 7. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that I radical 7 and replace what you had originally. So you have 3 plus or minus I radical 7 all over 2. And that's actually as simplified as you can get because the coefficients 3i and 2, you can't simplify. So we're going to write that fraction on the line here. That is an exact answer. And the reason this question says, why could we not have factored the original? Well, it's because of this i that's in the problem. We have, these answers are both imaginary. So the roots are imaginary, meaning they're not real. So they don't cross the x-axis. Okay, so anytime we get irrational or imaginary roots, we cannot factor. Alright, so let's go on to the next one. We're going to do three more on the back just to practice a little bit more with the quadratic formula. At the top, there's a couple things we need to know about the quadratic formula before we move on. That is that the quadratic must be set equal to zero. That's the same thing as when we were graphing our factoring, so that's not new here. The quadratic also must be in standard form, which means that the exponents are in descending order. That just means that your polynomial has to be in ax squared plus bx plus b4. So the square has to come first, then the x, then the constant. So in number one here on the example, we have a quadratic that's set equal to negative 3. I can't have it set equal to negative 3. That's rule number one. So we need to add 3 to both sides. That's going to cancel off and get you 0. So what you have here is 3x squared plus 7x plus 3. That 3 doesn't combine with anything because it's a constant and there's no other constants on that side. Alright, really quickly, remember A is the first number, B is the second, C is the third. So when I put this into my quadratic formula, I now know what A, B, and C are. So let's set that up. X equals. We have the opposite of B, so the opposite of 7 is negative 7, plus or minus one long square root. Now under your square root, you do B squared, which is 7 squared minus 4 times A times C. And that's all going to go over 2 times A. Now let's simplify this for a second. We keep the negative 7 plus or minus. Now we need to simplify the radicand again, which is the number under the square root. So again, we're going to go back to decimal, so your calculator here. We're going to put that 7, oops, put the 7 in parentheses, so we'll have 7 squared minus 4 times A times C. And it tells us that the value under the radical is 13. That's what we're going to put back on our notes here. We'll put a 13 here. And our denominator, 2 times 3, is 6. Now when I look at this, I have to look at the square root of 13. Square root of 13 does not simplify. So this is actually as simplified as your answer can get. That's your exact answer here. Negative 7 plus or minus radical 13 over 6. Alright, I'm going to skip the rounded solutions for now. We don't need to worry about that too much. But that's an exact solution. Rounded solution would be if I put that into my calculator and found the decimal. Okay. But we can decide 
find the next part based on the exact solution we have. This number is irrational because there's a square root, which means that this quadratic is not factorable. Okay. Let's look at number two. 2x two squared plus 11x minus 6. Um, there is set equal to 0, so we can go ahead right away and label our a, b, and c so we can use the quadratic formula. All right, let's set this up. x equals, we take the opposite of b, so the opposite of 11 is negative 11, plus or minus. Now, under the radical, we keep the 11 in parentheses and square it, minus 4 times a times c. Make sure they all go in parentheses all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. All right, x equals. Now, remember, again, we are simplifying what's under the radical here. All right, so just the radicand. So let's put that into Desmos and see what we get. Oh, I don't know what you can do 11 squared minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 6. So that's the parentheses. And it gives me 169. All right, so we put that under our radical here. And 2 times 2 is 4. All right, now when I look at this, you should know that the square root of 169 is 13. Okay, so the square root of 169 off to the side here is equal to 13. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the square root of 169 with a 13 in my work here. So what I'm going to have is negative 11 plus or minus 13 over 4. Now that is your answer, but that's not exactly how we like it. I would say that if you get rid of the square root, if you get a perfect square and you just get a number like we have, you need to simplify this answer fully. Now what I mean by that is this. You have a plus or a minus. So you're going to write one fraction here. That says negative 11 plus 13 over 4. And then you're going to do another fraction that's negative 11 minus 13 over 4. Now, negative 11 plus 13 is 2, and 2 over 4 is 1 half. So that's one of your exact answers. Negative 11 minus 13 is negative 24. Divided by 4 gives you negative 6. And that's your other exact answer. Because those are exact, I don't have to do the rounded solution. And they are rational, so yes, this quadratic could be factored if you wanted to. All right, one more problem on the notes here. All right, we start. We are not set equal to zero. So the first thing you need to do is move the 6x to the left and add the 6 constant to the left. So those are going to cancel off and give you an equal of 0. So let's rewrite this. 2x squared, 4 minus 6 is negative 2x, and negative 1 plus 6 is plus 5, equal 0. All right, let's label our a, b, and c, and we'll put that into the quadratic formula. So of x equals, we take the opposite of b, which is positive 2, plus or minus, under my radical, I'm going to take negative 2 in parentheses and square it. Minus 4 times my a times my c. And then I'm going to divide it all by 2 times a. Now let's take Desmos and simplify my radicand. I'm going to start with the parentheses here. Negative 2 squared minus 4 times 2 times 5. And that gives me negative 36. So negative 36 is what's under the radical. So I have 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 36 over 4. Now, the square root of 36, I'm going to do it up here. Negative 36. There's a negative there, which means I'm going to have an i in my answer. I have to break that down to negative 1 times square root of 36 which will simplify to be 6i. So I'm going to replace that here. 2 plus or minus 6i over 4. Now that is my answer, but it's not fully simplified because 2, 6, and 4 all are multiples of 2. So I need to factor 2 out of each number. Alright, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 
plus or minus 3i divided by 2. And that will be your most simplified answer. Because I have an i, I don't need to break it up into two fractions. Okay, so I'll write it like that. I can't round anything because it's the i. And because there's an i, that means this quadratic is not factorable. All right, those are your notes. There are lots of practice problems over the quadratic formula. If you have any questions, you need to ask your teacher for help and watch the videos for those practices as well.